Ah, uh, happy new... Well, I'm, I'm really late, I should fix my schedule. Eh, whatever, L let's do some shit of Quantum Waveform Collapse. ROLL THE INTRO! Quantum Waveform Collapse. It's an algorithm that I've always wanted to try and implement, mainly just because of the name. It's got quantum in it, it has to be good, but what is it? Now, for the people who possess the nowadays rare ability to think for yourself, you might have realised that the title says Generate Terrain, and that's exactly what this is going to be used for. Uh, uh, welcome to lesson one of how quantum... Wait... Quan... Works, let me get, let me get a drink of... Oh, okay. yeah. So basically, how it works, okay, let me, let me drop it. Nah, nah, gotta restart. Gotta restart, that's not good. Let me try again. Nah, it's not straight. <coughs> that's like, you know, it might want a blue thing on top. Yeah, blue. I like blue. Okay, I have a habit of yapping a lot, so I'm just gonna start with the coding. Three to one, let's go. Uh, go montage, uh, triangle, square, cube, more cubes, spinning cubes, full screen cubes, nicer looking cubes, gay cubes. And okay, I'm done with the graphical bit. Okay, so I have this cube world, but how can I use this algorithm to generate terrain? Well, using this algorithm, I can place down a cube and it will tell me which cubes go best with it and then repeat that over and over again and you generate terrain. Specifically, the quantum waveform collapse algorithm can be used to find the state of something given a probability wave function and the states of the things around it that can affect it. You know what, I'm a visual learner, so I'm going to illustrate this with a nice, uncontroversial example. This is little Timmy, and he is having a birthday party. The issue is, he has a lot of friends, but his friends are highly political. So some of them want to sit near each other, and others want to murder anyone who has a different viewpoint to him. Now, you see every seat at the table has an equal chance of containing anyone. If you want to use quantum mumbo jumbo words to sound smart, which I don't have to, I'm just naturally this good, then you can call it a superposition. But how do we find who sits where? Well, we pick a random seat, take its superposition, and collapse it. Now, I would love to say real political party names. I even had a script written beforehand. It had, so I had Nigel Farage, Trump, Elon, it was, it was fun. But I also don't want anyone turning up to my door holding a pipe bomb with my name on it. So I'll just make up some party names. Uh, this person is from the uh, Yellow Banana Party. Uh, now, it could have also been anyone else who could have sat there because the probabilities of who, who would sit in that specific place were equal. But he was chosen. But wait, now that he is here, the superpositions around him changed. He has preferences, you know, like not wanting to be near any of those disgusting, dirty, green banana voters, and also blue people. But he also has preferences on who he wants to be near, like, for example, fellow blue people racists. This makes it so that some of the superpositions now slightly favour certain people, and they have a higher or lower chance to sit next to him. Let's collapse another. Oh look, it's Timmy's racist uncle that's not allowed near primary schools anymore. He actually ran for Yellow Banana MP in 2010, well, that was before the incident, so he is actually good mates with the guy and thus had a high chance of being placed right next to him. Let's collapse another. Oh look, it's a small child. Now, you see, he doesn't have any political preferences, so that didn't really affect his choice, but he was taught at a very young age to stay away from the strange man, so the odds of him sitting near the uncle were very low, and in fact, sitting far away was higher. Okay, you know what? I, I think you're starting to get the general idea. I'm just gonna collapse one more just to get this over with. Oh, look, a green banana voter. Now, I don't really think I need to explain why this happened. He hate yellow man, so he sit far from yellow man. Except... The uncle ran as a moderate that, in a time of division, united the public to fix the real problems in society, like the cost of living crisis and fighting against the corrupt system. His reign may have been short, but that's all he needed to become an icon of the people. What I'm trying to say is that he also wants to sit near uncle. Then, okay, rinse and repeat, you collapse probabilities until everyone is seated. Or, you get a contradiction that won't work, like placing Timmy's mother and father together. You, you really just have to restart the whole thing. Now, you can then take this algorithm and reshape it. Instead of working with seats at a birthday party, work in a 2D grid, actually. Now, forget that, a 3D voxel space. 
where each voxel depends on another, like how those seats depended on one another from earlier. And you can, in theory, generate any kind of terrain with this. All you need to do is just provide a probability wave function for it to, you know, figure everything out from. But you can even just teach the algorithm the probability wave function. That's the thing that decides what goes next to or doesn't go next to something if you weren't paying attention by just giving it an example and it'll figure it out. So you don't even need to code anything, which is great because the whole point of programming is to make sure you never have to program. So uh, I think it's time I started coding the algorithm, don't you think? Yeah, I'll take a minute, just have a little, little break. Mm. Okay, let's code. Okay, so I've coded a basic version of the algorithm. Uh, there was no time cut. It only took me like a split second. I'm, I'm just that awesome. And it has some basic rules. You know, grass goes on top of dirt and then air goes on grass. You know, just like a, a basic idea of ground. So uh, let's see if it works. Sweet. Oh, okay, it does look a bit eh. The rules I added were very basic. And right now when a contradiction happens, like air underground, which can happen, it's it's all random chance really. The algorithm just continues going on, pretending nothing happened. Kind of like how we ignore that the Titanic was sunk to kill people opposed to the creation of the US Central Bank. Good thing that the solution for this is pretty simple. Now, first I'm gonna do this in 2D to start off. What am I gonna do, you're asking? Well, I'm going to give it some data for it to learn from, and in this case, an image. Step one, get an image. Okay, okay, that's the easy bit, you know? Don't get ahead of yourself. Step two, get a list of different pixels from said image. Step three, check which pixels are near each type of pixel and store that in a list. You are now done. Then to generate a new picture, you just look at our known pixel, look at what's around it, and randomly choose a pixel that has a matching list. If you can't find one, just reset everything and try again. And, and this surprisingly works. For simple patterns like this checkerboard, it can recreate the exact same pattern after being provided just one sample image and just generates it infinitely. Remember, this isn't hard coded at all. All I did was give it a single image to learn from. Okay, here's a single line. Something so simple, even a really disabled two-year-old can draw it. Let's get this algorithm to do it. You know, should be easy. Okay, uh, Mr. Quantum, get draw me a line, please. A line. I said a line. I asked for one line, you fu- Okay, what happened? Context. What context? The stuff it can see kind of context. Uh, let's try this image. Generate. Okay, that took a moment. Probably lots of contradictions. Well, yeah. Now, okay, look at the generated image. It knows how to blend colors together. That's because it knows what blocks go next to what. But for bigger stuff like shape and composition, it goes a bit... That's because it only checks for the blocks directly near another, which means that for smaller details like shading and blending, it's fine but for bigger ones, it tends to forget things like it already drew a line or how thick it should be. But all you need to do is just expand how far it looks for blocks and overall, it seems to work pretty fine considering all it needs is a single image. But, okay, let's try something more complicated. Mario. Okay, so a uh, slight problem. It keeps getting way too many contradictions and restarting. Because there's lots of different coloured pixels, there can be lots of possible combinations. When there was that checkerboard pattern, there were two pixels in a 20 by 20 grid. So 2.582 whatever times 10 to the 120 combinations. Okay, so that's a lot, but once one pixel is placed down, you can narrow it down to just one outcome, as a checker pattern is very simple. Mario, on the other hand, is 14 by 20 with 157 different types of pixels. You know it's bad when even Google doesn't give you an answer, and you have to pop open Wolfram Alpha, 
Remember, that doesn't mean six times as big, that means six times as many zeros. That is so big, it just doesn't mean anything. It's bigger than a Google. Only a Googleplex is bigger, but that number is just as meaningless. And the best part, it can't even throw out most of the possibilities, like with that checker pattern. Like, if you gave me a pixel and a gun and told me to draw Mario, I'd pull the trigger. The issue is that there are way too many contradictions, so it just keeps restarting. So, what did I, Skaz the Great, do? I just, I just removed that feature. Because, you know, me personally, I don't like following the rules. Especially after the cowards at National Rail, the least National Rail service gave me a f***ing warning card because I didn't pay my f***ing fare. And then they think it's so funny that if I don't pay again, they will fine me a hundred quid plus the ticket price. And with the god awful state of the trains in this country, that will double my fine probably. Look, it's a me, Mario. And okay, yeah. It looks the same as the original image because it's such a complex image that even if it doesn't follow all of the rules, because I removed the resetting, following most of them looks the same. So it's pointless trying to be a perfectionist, it looks like. Fucking National Rail, I hate the piece of shit. God awful. Okay, you know what? This actually, now that I think of it, it does kind of like act like a compression algorithm. Actually, yeah, let me actually calculate this. So you have 157 states. Kernel of 9, that's 157 squared times 9. You'll need a bit, so divide by 8,000 to get kilobytes, and that is 28 kilobytes. Seven times as big as the original image. Okay, maybe it's not a good compression algorithm, but this does have the benefit of working on images of any size, as long as you aren't too picky of how the outcome looks, that is. Well, okay, so I've done 2D. I think it's time to move to 3D. So, made some 2D slices of a block world, put them together, taught it, and... What? Oh, oh wait, I still have to try for 2D. Uh, let me fix that. You know what? Not too bad. Like, it does get the rough idea of, you know, ground on bottom, air on top, and this is with it ignoring contradictions, so stuff like dirt can get exposed. If I enable the resetting, which I still have, good programmers comment code, not delete, then I get even better results. So I just need to shrink the world size if I want to see them sometime today. Remember, all I gave the algorithm is this 3D world. Nothing was programmed. And now, because I have this all set up, I could just draw new features and they get added to the generation. This can, in theory, generate any kind of terrain. It's just a a little bit unstable. Want some sick ass boulders? You get some sick ass boulders, that's what. But well, don't get too excited, this won't, well, hasn't revolutionized game dev as we know it, because every new feature added means it takes longer to generate. So if you want to generate good looking stuff, you, you can't ignore contradictions because people are apes that want perfection. And let's try this example, a single torch on a hill. I run the algorithm and, well, it seems that it really likes torches. That's because when collapsing superpositions, it only looks at the neighbors a block or two away and, oh shit, deja vu, it can forget that it already made a torch and make another one. And details like, you know, the big hill are completely lost because it can't see far enough. So why are you a big fat nerd, just increase the block looking radius and they'll fix the dementia problem in it and also lead to overall smoother and cleaner looking terrain. Well okay, let's do that plus the contradiction resetting. How many years are you willing to wait? Because do you want to know why this is called quantum waveform collapse? Because this is meant for quantum computers which can compute this stuff very, very fast. And regular poor people, non-quantum computers, well, they can compute it, sort of, but not fast at all. <sighs> so, the moral of the story, uh, I probably should have just done train generation like how everyone else does it. You know, I wasted three whole fucking months trying lots of projects because, well, nothing worked. And, you know, I finally got to this and then this is the result of it. Fan-fucking-tastic. Wait, 
Oi, no, don't, don't pan out of, the video's still going. Whatever. Uh, see you sometime between now and next year. Or maybe next decade.